20 miles south of Olympia, Washington, there are strange 8 feet tall and 30 feet wide grass mounds. They cover an area of nearly one square mile. These small hills are known as the Mima Mounds, and nobody knows what created them. They've been haunting the dreams of geologists for nearly 200 years. Scientists have been arguing about what exactly caused these mounds to pop up all over the place. There are such theories as earthquakes, glaciers, gas vents, clay swelling, and even termites. In 1942, geologists supposed that pocket gophers could create the mounds. In 1987, the theory was tested. Small bits of metal were pushed into the mounds and monitored with the help of a metal detector. As gophers dug their burrows, the pieces of metal were pushed uphill. A computer program analyzed those results. It turned out that many generations of gophers could indeed form the mounds. It would take them over hundreds of years. But why would they push the soil up when it takes way less energy to move it behind them? That's unclear. So far, gophers' involvement is still just a theory. Scientists used to consider the Amazon rainforest a large ecosystem that's been filled with trees for millions of years. Yet when the 16-foot-wide Amazon rings were discovered, it changed all the theories. These rings proved that the area looked very different before forests started growing here. It looked like a modern savanna. Scientists took soil samples near the lakes, and the results showed that this soil didn't come from a rainforest. It was from dry lands. It may mean that people who used to live here probably had a completely different environment from what scientists thought. Geologists are still studying the rings, and they're trying to figure out what purpose they serve. Known as the Eye of the Sahara, the Rishad structure is a 30-mile-wide ring-shaped object in the middle of the desert. Rishad was initially thought to be a meteorite impact site, but now scientists believe that it was created by the erosion of a hill or mountain. It eroded away over time, but left layers of rock rings that were once a mountain. The eye is so prominent that the astronauts on board the International Space Station can see it from up there. Antarctica is the coldest, driest, windiest place on Earth. But the strangest thing about it might be located deep under the ice. Until about 60 years ago, Antarctica was considered flatland. That all changed in 1958 when the Gampertsev mountain range was discovered. It was hiding under 2 miles of ice. Its peaks were more than 10,000 feet tall, and the whole range stretched for 750 miles. That's one-third of the height of Mount Everest and about half the length of the Himalayas. No one has ever laid eyes on the Gambertsev Mountains. The ice hides deep valleys and steep inclines. They could show what Earth looked like millions of years ago. Lake Vashtak in East Antarctica was discovered in 2012 during drilling. Scientists found a freshwater lake untouched and unfrozen under more than 2 miles of ice. Researchers believe that undiscovered microorganisms and unique geochemical processes might exist in the lake. After all, it hasn't seen sunlight or been exposed to Earth's atmosphere for over 15 million years. But drilling into the lake is likely to ruin the ecosystem below and contaminate one of the last untouched places on the planet. There's a 350-foot anomaly in the Indian Ocean, known as the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, IOGL. It produces the largest distorting natural gravitational force in the world. Heavy mineral deposits, many deep-sea trenches, and magma reservoirs disturb the magnetic field in this area. Earth's gravity changes in different places around the planet. It allows researchers to look for patterns and figure out what's happening beneath the surface. Higher gravity fields usually means denser materials below and vice versa. Some scientists believe that the anomaly might be a dent in the planet's mantle that it's working its way up to the crust. The Cave of Crystals in the Mexican state of Chihuahua These caverns are filled with amazing gypsum crystals that crisscross the entire subterranean area. The caves were discovered in 2000, when workers were draining water from a zinc mine. That's when they stumbled upon these sparkling structures. 
The crystals were so pure and large, around 33 feet in length, and had such sharp edges that geologists couldn't date them using conventional methods. Luckily, researchers discovered 50,000-year-old bacteria samples within one of the complex constructions. It was extremely hard to work in the caves. There, the temperatures reached 136 degrees Fahrenheit, and the humidity was extremely high. Scientists needed special cooling equipment to get down to the cave, even though they only made short trips. Unfortunately, the company that owned the mine reflooded the cave system, preventing any further study. Around 450 miles away from Bangkok, in northeast Thailand, there's a 75 million year old rock formation. These rocks look like three whales swimming together. The beautiful design created by nature became known as Three Whales Rock. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert, but the land was changing. Gradually, sandstone got pulled apart by the movements of tectonic plates and erosion. That's how these spectacular formations were created. If you decide to explore the system of trails around Three Whales Rock, you'll find waterfalls and abundance of fauna and flora there. Locals call the Potomsky Crater in Siberia Fire Eagle's Nest. It's a gigantic 500-foot-wide and 100-foot-tall limestone mound. Nothing grows near or on top of it, and animals do their best to avoid this place. First discovered by geologists in 1949, the crater is believed to be around 500 years old. The most likely theory of its origin is a burst of steam. This could happen during a period of rapid gas expansion in the region. Scientists think that Fire Eagle's Nest might be a very rare gas volcano. Gigantic gas stockpiles might have been trapped deep underground. It could happen because of limestone forming around these storages and creating immense pressure. A sudden release of the stored gas could have formed this mammoth-sized hole in the surrounding forest. Lake Hillier in Western Australia is only 2,000 feet in length. But its color has been baffling geologists for a long time. Unlike most pink lakes in the world, Lake Hillier has a pink color all year round. Its hue isn't affected by sunlight or temperature. If you look at it from above, the lake's bright color will be in stark contrast with the surrounding blue of the Great Australian Blight. The real reason for the Hillier's unique color is still not fully understood. Many presume it has something to do with microalgae in the lake, or it might be a reaction between salt and sodium bicarbonate found in the water. The chocolate hills in the Bohol province of the Philippines are covered in lush green vegetation for the largest part of the year. But these 1,200-plus mounds turn a chocolate brown during the dry season. That's what gave them their name. Strangely, no trees or shrubs grow on them. Another mystery is how the mounds managed to develop so symmetrically. There are myths that involve giants throwing boulders at one another for days on end during a fight. Scientists believe that the 150-foot-tall mounds were created by eroding limestone that was stacked on clay. But to this day, the mystery of their formation remains unsolved. The Great Unconformity represents about 1 billion years of missing rock records. It appears in all kinds of rock formations all over the world. Scientists have been trying to find the answers to how and when this enormous amount of material could disappear. One of the most plausible theories involves glaciers. It could happen during the time known as Snowball Earth. That's when the planet was completely covered by ice. Then glaciers tore away hundreds of thousands of tons of rock and dirt. This left a gigantic gap up to a mile thick between the neighboring rock layers. Some geologists think that the record went missing when the supercontinent Rodinia formed and broke apart. Located on Yamal and Gidon peninsulas, these expansive pit holes were discovered in 2014. They seem to be still changing and evolving. The pits grow wider, and people find them more often. Of course, there's no shortage of theories about how they appeared. Suggestions range from meteorite impacts to the activity of other civilizations. But the most common explanation is that methane gas reacted to water particles after the planet's permafrost started to melt. 
This resulted in bubbles of methane bursting through the ice. The craters could be thousands of years old, but nobody knows for sure. It was 29,002 feet in 1954. 22 years later, it grew by 27 feet. In 1999, the top was 7 feet higher. In 2020, it was 3 feet less than that. What gives? Mount Everest is still the tallest mountain in the world, even though its height is constantly changing. It had been measured for the first time long before anyone even climbed it. In the 19th century, there used to be this thing called a theodolite, the grandfather of mechanisms engineers and land surveyors use today. It measured the angles between two horizontal points. After that, it would go with basic trigonometry to measure where the third point is and how distant it is. That's how mountains are measured. It was complicated because people who measured it had to know where sea level is. Now, there's no sea near the Himalayas, which is why surveyors had to walk all the way from the Bay of Bengal to do the measuring. Others who tried to measure Everest later got similar results, but never the same. Sea level is constantly going up or down because of changes happening on Earth. So it's not easy to be that precise. Mount Everest is part of the Himalayan mountains, and the whole chain is getting taller by around one-fifth of an inch a year. The tectonic collision that created the Himalayas in the first place started 50 million years ago, and it's still going on. That causes growth, but also brings earthquakes that are in charge of reducing its height. So the information from older geography books may not be accurate these days. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain, but only compared to those measured above sea level. There's Mauna Kea volcano in Hawaii, and if you measure from its underwater base, it's 4,000 feet taller than Everest. Antarctica actually has several time zones, nine of them to be precise. The Great Wall of China. Nope, it can't be seen from space. Sure, sometimes you can identify it when in lower Earth orbit, but at these heights, you can see many structures built by civilization. For example, the Great Pyramids of Giza. When on the moon, you can see some green vegetation and a beautiful, mostly white sphere, lots of blue, and patches of yellow. Nope. Oh no, you swallowed a gum accidentally. <laughs> no worries, your body won't need seven years to digest it. It's a myth our parents told us to stop us from swallowing gums. Your body can't digest the ingredients found in gums, so it'll simply move it along. You don't swallow eight spiders a year while sleeping. Spiders, luckily, don't care about humans, and they don't have any prey or something else that might interest them in your bed. They see you as some kind of a big rock. The air coming from your mouth is creating vibrations that will stop them from trying to get into your mouth. A popular story that famous physicist Albert Einstein failed math in school isn't exactly true. He failed in botany, zoology, and language sections at an entrance exam to a school in Zurich. He was always great at math. Boy, I sure wasn't. It never added up for me. Humans and dinosaurs never really coexisted. They missed each other by over 60 million years. Oil won't prevent pasta from sticking. If you like adding oil, feel free to, but it will only make pasta greasier. Stir it to stop it from clumping. You only use 10% of your brain, or not. You never use 100% of your brain all at once, but you use every region almost every day. Your brain needs to work at full capacity all the time because that's something that keeps you alive. Bananas don't grow on trees. They are big herbs that resemble trees. Pineapples grow from the center of a leafy plant that's on the ground. Goldfish may not be the smartest animal ever, but their memory is longer than 3 seconds. It's up to 3 months, which isn't a lot, but enough for it to remember your 3 wishes. Shaving won't thicken your hair. It'll grow the same as it was. You may only think it's darker or coarser because the hair will grow back with a blunt tip. Coffee lovers, don't worry. Caffeine won't dehydrate you. It does have a diuretic effect, but still, the amount of water in your coffee has the opposite effect. So, you're good. You won't damage your eyes if you're too close to the TV screen. That blue light coming from it causes strain in your eyes, but it's a temporary condition. Dogs see more than black and white. They can't see the full color spectrum as humans do, but the world is not a couple of shades of gray for them. They have around 20 to 40% of visual acuity humans have, so distant things may be pretty blurry for pups. But they see better in dimmer light and can detect motions or any kind of movements way better than you do. 
especially when the delivery guy is approaching the front door. Bees aren't only attracted to yellow out of all shades. They also see colors a little bit different than humans. They recognize only lighter ones, such as green or yellow. All darker colors look black to them. That's why they're more likely to go for flowers with light colors and clothes of the same tones. If you're wearing a green t-shirt, you might look like a flower to them. Almost all creatures on Earth have a limited lifespan. One species of jellyfish is immortal. It matures, but at one point it simply reverts back to the juvenile polyp stage. That cycle of phases is endless. There are many types of berries, but a strawberry is not one of them. Scientists define berry as a plant with three distinct layers. There's an outer skin, a fleshy middle, and internal seeds. That means watermelon, grapes, and eggplants are technically berries. Polar bears aren't really white. They have black skin, and their fur is clear and hollow. They only look white because light hits their fur and stays trapped inside of that hollow part of a particular hair. That causes something called luminescence. With all that, salt particles stick to their fur and then start scattering light. If you set a chameleon on a yellow surface, it'll turn yellow. If you set it on a red one, it'll turn red. In fact, chameleons don't change their own color to adjust to the color of their surrounding. Their mood, the amount of light, and temperature makes them change color. So when you see a bright yellow chameleon, it might be angry. Giraffes have the same number of neck vertebrae as you do. An average human neck is only 4 inches long, while giraffes usually have a 6-foot neck. But both have 7 bones in their necks. Pirates don't have eye patches to cover an eye that's missing, but to increase their night vision. They had to be aware of everything going on around them. So… Many think it's just a dry desert with nothing but sand over there. But research shows there's definitely water on Mars. Scientists found big saltwater lakes under the ice at the planet's south pole. Bats are not blind. Their eyes are small and they don't see that well during the daytime, especially not so sharp and colorful as humans do. But their vision is adapted to different conditions and is excellent during the nighttime, unlike ours. Black holes aren't invisible. A black hole is a very compact and huge object that has an extremely powerful gravitational pull, so strong even light can't avoid it. The swallowing center is something scientists call the event horizon. It's surrounded by a glowing circle made of rock, debris, and space dust, so it can be seen pretty well. Scientists even got the first pictures of it. Despite what the name says, Iceland is not really covered with ice. The coast is ice-free during the entire winter. There are glaciers, but also lots of geysers and active volcanoes. In 2010, one of them woke up and threw up so much ash into the sky, air transport across Europe had to be stopped for a couple of days. Green peas, lentils, peanuts. Wait, peanuts? Yup, that's right. They don't belong to the group of nuts, but legumes. Moon has a dark side. Not quite. The side that's facing away from the Earth is no darker than any other part of its surface. Sunlight equally falls on all of its sides, so it only seems to be dark from our perspective. There are many miles of undiscovered areas beneath the crust we can't even come close to. Scientists found what appears to be underground mountains buried inside the mantle. Our planet is divided into three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The crust is where 8 billion people, trillions of trees, and millions of animals live and thrive. There are also different types of crust in the land and the ocean. The oceanic crust contains unique rocks and is denser than the land crust. We all see how the Earth is divided and color-coded to show the crust, mantle, and core in textbooks. But there are also special layers in between that not everyone talks about. The mantle is divided into the upper and lower part, which is the transition zone. Since the mantle acts as the geological recycling center, the plate tectonics don't only move side to side, but up and down. It's actually why all the volcanoes appeared. The magma spews out to the surface or even underwater and then sinks back down and repeats. The transitions go down 250 miles and then 410 miles. And in this bottom layer, scientists keep discovering the hidden landscapes. The mountains in the mantle are more rugged and much larger than the ones on the crust. 
scientists found a mountain range with peaks higher than Mount Everest. Some of them are as high as 600 miles. When the continents were still landlocked together, there may have been some hidden lands now underwater. Theories suggest that Iceland used to be part of a larger microcontinent, Icelandia, which connected present-day Iceland with Greenland and Scandinavia. The idea digs even deeper to a greater Icelandia, which includes Britain. But after the split, these bigger lands sunk with everything in it. There are also theories about New Zealand being part of Zealandia, a hidden microcontinent within the same region. So it could be that these mountains used to be part of old Earth that are underground over the billions of years of natural occurrences. But still, it isn't very likely. One theory is that these underground mountain ranges could be leftover slabs of rock that descended from the surface to the transition zone from the moving of the tectonic plates. As they sink, the large pieces break down into smaller ones, and as they compile over the millions of years, they form what appears to be underground mountains. Since the mantle is the geologic recycling zone, it's likely that the rocks down there used to be part of the surface. They weren't large pieces of land that got hidden, just like dogs hide bones in the garden. But it takes way more time to hide mountains. Some parts of the mantle appear to be smooth, while others aren't so much. The parts that have a cluster of rocks could contain hidden elements in the underground mountains. The smoother parts don't have much seismic or volcanic activity, while the rough parts do. The best way to study those underground landscapes is to wait for an earthquake or a volcano eruption to happen. Seismologists can observe the Earth's interior with special scanners, just like doctors use ultrasound to examine a patient. They can even see minor details and not huge chunks of rocks. A strong enough earthquake can send shockwaves to the Earth's interior, even through the core and back up to the surface. Depending on where they occur, seismologists can observe and study the intensity of the waves as they move back and forth. On smooth rocks, the waves can travel in a straight line, but once they reach a rough area, the waves tend to scatter. The temperature and composition of the materials can make the waves move faster or slower. But this info isn't exactly accurate and won't contribute a lot to the actual data of the underground mountains. So by analyzing the scattered waves on ships and utilizing the Earth's magnetic field, scientists can figure out everything they need to know. But these studies are only good enough to figure out the interior in today's state, not how the Earth changed over the past 4.5 billion years. However, scientists are certain that mantle material still dates back to the beginning of Earth's original formation. The question, why not just dig a hole to the center of the Earth and see what's going on down there, might seem logical. The deepest hole humans have dug so far is the Kola Deep Borehole in the Russian Arctic that goes more than 40,000 feet deep. The locals claim they can actually hear screaming coming from below. It took almost 20 years to drill as far as they went, but it's literally merely scratching the surface of what's underneath. They dug about one third of the crust, which is only 0.2% to the center of the Earth. Getting there is beyond us, just like trying to reach the sun. No human can handle the amount of pressure down there. Going down the Mariana Trench, the Earth's deepest point, requires special gear to withstand all the immense pressure. It'll cost a fortune to build that tech to get us to the center of our planet. Evidence of diamonds buried deep in Brazil shows that everything we do on the crust's surface can affect things miles below, even towards the mantle. Scientists dug up six diamonds that could hold tiny mineral grains. As they're called in the mineral world, these inclusions have a chemistry composition where they originated deep in the Earth. Typical diamonds are formed at depths less than 125 miles in the upper mantle, where it's extremely hot. The high pressure and boiling temperature down crystallizes carbon and creates diamonds. But humans can't dig all the way down there. They mine them by detecting where a deep volcanic eruption happened that expelled these diamonds to the surface. These eruptions occurred millions of years ago, when dinosaurs used to rule the Earth. They shot out the diamonds that were in the mantle and are now embedded within the cooled-down volcanic material. 
That's where people mine them. But these special diamonds found in Brazil originated from a much deeper point than usual, which can further help scientists study the depths of the Earth. They can extract these inclusions and analyze them in a lab to tell where exactly these minerals come from. In the lab, scientists study inclusions, each just 15 to 40 microns wide, less than a quarter width of a human hair. They found out that they contained many types of minerals found in volcanic rock on the surface. The carbon composition of the magma from the surface is much different than the ones deep in the Earth. What's crazy is that these diamonds with special inclusions can only be found 435 miles in the lower mantle. With only a few samples of them found, we don't know what else lies beneath us. It's possible that those mountain ranges underground, taller than Mount Everest, can have traces of diamonds all around, which would prompt excavators to dig them up and saturate the market with them. These diamonds are less flawed than the usual ones and might even come in many sizes. It's possible to see diamonds as large as a car or as small as a grain of rice. There might even be new diamonds with different chemical compositions than the ones we find near the surface. The largest diamond in the world is the Cullinan, which can fit in the palm of your hand. It weighs around 1.3 pounds and is 3,100 carats. It was found in 1905 in South Africa. For anything to exist on Earth, you need carbon. In a nutshell, the carbon cycle is when plants and algae release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere or dissolved in water through photosynthesis. It's converted into carbohydrates and stored as fat. Later on, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere through breathing, which the plants benefit from, and the cycle goes on. Scientists claim that there might even be a carbon cycle in Earth's interior. The oceanic crust has a lot of carbon sediment that could mix with the upper and lower mantle layer. But there still isn't enough evidence to support this. The deep diamonds might be the key to popping open that theory. Only time will tell.